The COVID-19 pandemic has affected Kenya's food systems directly through impacts on food supply and demand and indirectly through decreased capacity to produce and distribute food. In response to that, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives is addressing food supply chain and nutrition challenges through the establishment of one million kitchen gardens in rural and urban households. Through these one million kitchen gardens, the ministry is contributing to the Big Four agenda on the 100% food and nutrition security by enabling households to maintain a healthy diet. The ministry is supporting vulnerable households with kitchen garden starter kits that are simple, space and water efficient. So far, the first phase of the project has supported over 200,000 households through the KSAP, NARIC and CVAP projects. In phase two, the ministry will support an additional 200,000 vulnerable households in setting up their own kitchen gardens. We are here today at uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Kilimo House, uh, we, where we have the model uh, kitchen garden uh, demonstration site, where we set up all the technologies that uh, all households are able to adapt to, to be able to give them not only knowledge, but also be able to, you know, give them the instructions, you know, step-by-step -step guidance on how to set up these gardens. There are several incredible ideas through which one can establish a simple, space and water efficient kitchen garden using locally available materials. They include the corn garden, the multi-story garden, the micro garden, tire garden, moist bed garden, the weak irrigation garden and the simple drip irrigation garden. In this video, we will take a look at how you can establish a moist bed garden. A moist bed garden is a crop production technology designed to provide optimum soil moisture conditions in a small production area. The bed is lined with pollen paper to conserve water and to protect the plants from contaminated soil around the area. There are two types of moist bed gardens, the raised moist bed garden and the sunken moist bed garden. A sunken moist bed garden is suitable for root crops such as arrow roots that require a lot of water, while a raised moist bed garden is suitable for vegetables. To construct the moist bed garden, the materials required include a polythene bag, binding wire, three foot long fetals, soil mixed with manure at a ratio of one to one, a wheelbarrow, hardcore, dry grass or kitchen waste such as vegetable peels, a pliers, a scissors, tape measure, watering can, water, shovel and seedlings. Today we are going to learn how to construct a raised moist bed. We need to select our site and uh, the site where we are doing construction must not be under shade. After selecting site, we need to take the measurements and uh, the raised moist bed need not to be more than 1.2 meters wide. So we will take measurements on the ground as we put the pens there. So our moist bed is going to be 1.2 meters wide. After measuring the width of the bed, we now take the measurements of the length. And we are just going to do a bed of one meter wide. And now in between, we put pegs where we are going to put our fetus. Our poles are three feet, but one foot is supposed to be hit inside. Now 
our framework for the rest most bed is ready. So our next step is to measure the polythene that we are going to use for lining. This is what holds the materials for planting and the polythene should not have any hole to release water. Because our bed, we are using a polythene tube of gauge 1000. And because our, our bed is only one meter long, we leave an allowance of one extra meter to be able to fold at each end. So we measure two meters because our bed is one meter long. Then you cut your polythene using a scissor or a knife, depending on what you have. Once you have cut it, then you open up your polythene tube to make one large sheet. We now go into laying the polythene. the binding wire for securing the polythene on the framework. Because we have a total of 10 poles, we need a total of 10 pieces of binding wire. You make sure that your polythene is well lined well shaped, you fold your wire inside to avoid any accidents. Now our framework is ready. We have already put the polythene lining and the next step is to put the hardcore. We use hardcore on the lower end for in case there is excess water, that is where the excess water drains to. So we are going to start with the bigger stones and then we put the smaller ones at the top as we fill it to 30 centimeters or one foot. So you place your stones carefully, taking care not to puncture the polythene. After filling in to one foot, we are now ready to go to the next layer. In the next layer, we are going to put dry grass. And apart from dry grass, you can put in any kitchen waste like vegetable cuttings, fruit peels can be added into this layer, even dry weeds that can be of benefit to the crop that we are going to plant. The purpose of this dry grass is to form a barrier between the soil that we are going to add for planting so that it is not eroded down into the rocks which we have laid underneath. And you put the dry grass to a layer of about 10 centimeters. It is now ready and we are ready for the next step which is adding in our soil mixed with manure at a ratio of one to one. That is going to be our planting media. 
the reason why we do soil depth of 20 to 30 centimeters is because most of the vegetables we plant in the moist bed have that root depth. We make sure that soil goes into every corner and there's no space left that may cause water loss when we are doing irrigation. Our raised most bed is ready, as you can see. We have filled up the soil. What we now need to do is to water it thoroughly and let it set until the following day is when we do the planting. The reason we leave it overnight is because this is not a natural ground. Remember the soil has been added on top of a layer of hardcore and dry grass. So the soil needs to settle so that when we plant, the level will not go down. If we plant immediately, the level might go down. But we need to leave it overnight after watering, then we plant the following day. Our appeal to the viewers that may be watching this is, you know, see something and implement. This is how we collectively contribute to food and nutrition security when each and every household is able to produce safe food within the confines of their homes. From this tutorial, it is our hope that you will establish your own kitchen garden and enjoy a constant supply of fresh, nutritious vegetables, fruits and spices for you and your family. In case you need more information, kindly log on to www.kilimo.go.ke.